When my mother gave birth to my younger sister, I was still living and working in the next state over. As soon as I heard the news, I rushed back home. By the time I got to the hospital, visiting hours were over. I explained to the nurse my situation and after a lot of persuasion, she told me how to get to my mother's room. She said that my father was sleeping over in the room with my mom. Follow the yellow line. When you pass two hallways to your right, there will be a staircase to your left. It's an emergency exit staircase, but it's the easiest way to get to your mom's room. Go up one flight and your mom's room will be the third room to the left of the door 216. And don't go straying off now neither. I don't want you getting hurt or lost. These hallways sucked. Yes, they were lit well, but they were empty. I walked slowly, following the yellow line. I had this belief that if I get scared and start walking faster, whatever it is I'm scared of will know and get stronger. I got to the first hallway on my right. I saw a nurse walking towards me. Relieved, I waved at her. She gave me a smile and walked into one of the patient's rooms. As I turned to continue my walk, someone calls to me. Young man, young man, have you seen the nurse? Asked the old woman from the end of the hallway. I nodded and walked over to her. She just went into one of these rooms. Sorry, I don't know which one, but I can check for you. Oh, that's fine. I can find her myself, she insisted. I convinced her at least to let me walk with her to keep her company. I told her about my mom having just given birth and how excited I was. She smiled and we both checked each of the rooms. Some of the patients were still awake and we waved hello to her friends. We reached the last of the rooms and still did not find the nurse. At this point, I was a little creeped out. My only thought was, ghost, ghost, ghost. I offered to walk the woman back to her room and she agreed. She must have been pretty scared herself. When we got near her room, she thanked me and walked in. I quickly turned, briskly walked back to my end of the hallway and headed to my destination. The next morning, my dad and I decided to walk over to Burger King and grab some breakfast. On the way down, we passed the hallway where I met the old lady. There were construction workers and the maintenance men all over it. Dad, you know what's going on? I asked. They're renovating this side of the hospital. They've been working on it for months. So, no one is in these rooms? No way, it's a construction site now. No one is allowed over there. Oh my god, the people that they met were go go ghost. While in high school, I volunteered at a hospital called Bethesda. I've done supply, biomedical technician assistance, and lastly, concierge during my two years of volunteering. Nothing ever happened, it was usually a nice place. However, one winter night around Christmas time, most people went home. As I was finishing up my homework, I got bored and decided to go to the lower lobby since I've already finished all the reading materials on the main floor. I went down the stairs on the other side of the floor. When I got to the lobby, most of the lights had already gone out due to inactivity. Minding my own business, I walked into the lobby area to get the reading materials. Suddenly, the elevators opened up. However, when I looked inside expecting to see somebody, it was empty. Seeing no one, my heart beat so fast, it even got worse when the light at the hallway where I walked in from turned off automatically. I ran to open the elevator and pressed the main floor button as fast as I could, closed my eyes and ran out of the elevator as soon as it landed. Interested in sharing your stories? Submit them to momchronicles at gmail.com or in the description below. Here is the next story. Thank you. This happened to an aunt of mine told to me by my mother. My mother was a shaman that tied a string on her and blessed her. I don't know which hospital this aunt was in, but I know she is from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Anyways, my aunt had just given birth to her twins, and so she was feeling a bit restless. Something went wrong with her eyes. I don't remember exactly what, 
but her eyes were secreting a mucus-like liquid, so the doctors ordered for her to stay at the hospital so that they could monitor her and the twins. After a few nights, when the doctors came in to check on her in her room, they found her sitting on a cushioned chair with all the lights on. They told her that it wasn't good for the eyes and that she needed to lay in bed and rest. My aunt went back and laid in bed but requested that the doctors leave the lights on. They told her that they wouldn't because it would just make her eyes worse. The next night, the nurses found her sitting in the same spot with all the lights on like the previous night. Again, they guided her to her bed for her to rest and she requested for them to leave the lights on. She then added, please leave the lights on, they keep poking my eyes. But the nurses thought that she was delusional and left her to rest while dimming the lights as they walked out the door. Later that week, my parents went to visit her and her babies in the hospital. She told my mom what was going on when everyone wasn't in the room with her. She said, Every night, when everyone leaves the room, there would be this black figure of a woman and two little things with her. She forces me out of bed because she says it's hers. If I didn't get up, the two little things would either tickle my feet or poke my eyes. I had no choice but to sleep on the chair or somewhere else. My aunt then asked if my mom could perform a spell to fix her eyes with any sort of magic. This spell involved my mom blowing her breath on the eyes of my aunt. After a few days, her eyes were well enough to be discharged from the hospital. When she got home, her eyes stopped secreting the liquid and she also says that she doesn't see the entities anymore. Let me start by saying that I currently work at a hospital. My job title has since changed, but I used to go from floor to floor reviewing charts, making sure everything is correct and in the right place. It's a simple job, but the complicated part was that I worked the night shift from 11 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. There are six different units in the hospital that I would have to make it to. Some are just next to each other, but others were quite a ways. As I was leaving one unit to the next, I would have to walk down a long hall. This hall is dimly lit at night with windows not to the outside but to the office buildings that are closed, so if you looked inside it's pitch black. As I was walking halfway down the hall in a space in between the walls was a little girl playing on the ground. She was facing the wall so I couldn't see her face. She was humming, playing like she had an imaginary car on the floor. My first impression was that she was a visitor with family and decided to leave the patient's room to play quietly. So I asked her who she was here with and who she came to see. The little girl didn't answer me, nor did she turn around to even look at me. So I asked her again, asking for her name, hoping that I can go to the nurse's station to inform them about a missing girl. Again, she didn't say anything. This time, I thought I'd just go back to the unit and inform the nurses because it was getting already late. I took about 10 steps back towards the unit when I stopped and realized that maybe I should just take the little girl with me. I went back to where she was playing, but she was gone. The hall is a long way in both directions and the space was only big enough for a child to play with. This was when all the hairs on the back of my neck raised. I quickly paced back to the unit and asked if there were still any visitors left. That's when they told me that the last visitors left over two hours ago. I used to work at a hospital. It was an old three-story building and it had a basement where it used to be a morgue. Anyways, the hospital was once owned by the Catholic Church. The nuns were coming through the hospital quite frequently, but now the building is owned by the Adventist Church. Some of the nuns used to work here a long time ago, and some even died in this very hospital. Even patients would tell the nurses that they would see a nun come to give them communion. They swore up and down and were adamant that they have seen the nun. Sometimes the room lights would just come on by itself when there were no patients in the room. The toilets would flush by itself. 
lights in the old ICU would come on by itself. The TV would turn on and the volume would be turned up high. After we would turn off the TV and lights, a few minutes later, it would come back on. One of the janitors who worked the night shift said that he was cleaning the floors down in the basement because it was being converted into a clinic, lab, and storage. He saw a ball rolling down the hall. He went to check and saw a little girl walking into the waiting room. He thought there were still people down there, so he went to check, but when he went into the waiting room, there was no one there except a red ball. That janitor got spooked, and so he never worked night shifts at our hospital anymore. I told the story that some patients had seen the ghost of a nun at our hospital to my younger brother. My brother, John, is a big boy, about 300 pounds but a scaredy cat. John wasn't working or doing anything, so we made him go stay with my grandma because she was admitted into the hospital for CHF. One morning, when he was at the hospital, he saw a nun come out of a room and freaked it out. John closed the door and went to sit by my grandma. When I came in to relieve John, he told me that he saw the nun. My little brother was terrified. I asked the nurses if they had seen a nun come visit a patient this morning. One of them said that Sister Rosa was here visiting a patient in room 202. I laughed to myself. I told John in the morning when he came to relieve me that the nun that he saw was a real person and not the ghost. My husband used to work at a hospital cafeteria on third shift. He hated it because he sees spirits and ghosts, but money was tight so he stuck with that job until we were stable enough. One night, it was late and he was on his way to the basement to take out the trash. When he came around the corner, he saw an old Hmong man just standing there. Immediately, my husband began to get goosebumps. That old man looked pale and bluish. He told me that it was weird because patients shouldn't be down there. My husband then began to walk fast to the elevators and shouted in Hmong to the old man, This is only the basement. You shouldn't be down here. He then turned back to get a look before going into the elevators. However, when he turned around, the old man was gone. I found this chilling story on the net and wanted to share. My spine is still tingling. My creepiest and scariest ghost story for me happened about a year ago. It was really more of a possession than a ghost story. I was helping another nurse with a patient that had lived a very hard life. He had numerous things going on with him from cardiac to renal failure. You name it, he had it all going on. This man was very much afraid to die. Every time his heart monitor beeped, he would just go into a rage screaming, Don't let me die, don't let me die. It wasn't until later on that the other nurse and I found out why he didn't want to die. It was about 2 a.m. when his cardiac monitor started alarming the VTAC. We both rushed into the room, I'm pulling the crash cart behind me. When I get to the room, the other nurse is completely white. This man was sitting about two inches above the bed and was laughing. His whole look completely changed. His eyes just had a look of pure evil in them, and he had this evil smile on his face. He laughed at us and said, You aren't going to let me die, will you? And he laughed again. We were both kind of frozen. I reached up and hit the code blue button, and when I did, the man went into V-fib. He crashed back onto the bed. We started coding him, but after 20 minutes, it was called. Five minutes after the code was called, several of the code team was in the room cleaning up when this man sits straight up in the bed and says, You let him die. Too bad. And then he's starts laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> then he collapsed back into bed. We heard a horrible, agonizing scream. Every single person in that unit, including the patients and nurses, heard that scream. Then you could hear someone say, don't let me die, don't let me die, being whispered throughout the entire unit. All of the nurses that night were pale and scared. 
nobody went anywhere by themselves. By the next morning, the whispers were gone. The night shift nurses had a prayer service in the break room before we all left for home, and then we all had nightmares for weeks. I found this story off a website. In Korea, when a patient is taken to a hospital, a white wristband is placed on their left arm. These wristbands contain the patient's name and information. When a patient dies, a red wristband is placed on their right arm, and he or she are taken to the morgue. In one particular hospital in Korea, a young doctor was working the night shift. It was around 2 a.m. when he had finished his last operation. He was on the fifth floor and pressed the button for the elevator. The doctor was tired after a long day and was looking forward to the end of his shift. At 2 a.m., the hospital was very quiet. Most of the patients were asleep and many of the nurses had already gone home. He entered the elevator and there was just one other person there. He casually chatted with the woman while the elevator descended. The elevator stopped at the basement and the door opened. They saw an old man dressed in a white gown standing there. The old man was about to get in when the doctor suddenly slammed the close button and punched the button for the fifth floor. Why did you do that? asked the astonished woman. I've performed a lot of operations, replied the doctor. I've seen a lot of people die. When a patient dies, they get a red wristband placed on their arm. The woman was silent. You saw it, didn't you? said the doctor. That old man. That old man had a red wristband on his arm. A red wristband? said the woman as she raised her right arm. You mean like this one? I work as a nurse at a hospital. One night, as we were winding down after our shift, chatting among ourselves, we noticed a homeless man wandering down the hall. Initially, we didn't think much of it and informed the unit clerk, who promptly called security to investigate. When the security guard arrived, we directed him to where we had seen the homeless man, but he couldn't find anyone. Perplexed, I decided to check the rooms myself. As I made my way back to the nurse's station, I noticed a television on in an unoccupied room. Curious, I entered the room, but it was empty. After turning off the TV, I returned to the nurse's station to ask if anyone had been in room 11. To my surprise, everyone denied having been in there. Later, one of the nurses attended to a terminally ill patient who eventually passed away from respiratory distress. After the family left and the morgue was called, a nursing assistant cleaning the deceased patient noticed a slight movement in the left arm. Alarmed, she alerted the nurse in charge. Upon examination, it was confirmed that the patient had indeed passed away, showing no signs of life. However, just as they were about to cover the patient, the left arm twitched. When they looked closer, they discovered a pacemaker, which explained the movement. As the nurse left the room, she spotted the homeless man exiting room 11. Concerned for both the patient's safety and the security of the hospital, she called the security again and attempted to locate the homeless man. However, this man seemed to have vanished without a trace. The security guard went room to room and found nothing either. We were all concerned because it's not safe for a homeless person roaming in our hospital. All the nurses and nurses' aide searched the hospital and still no sign of the homeless man.